is in support of the governor, Scott, and the people of uh, Florida. Uh, we have pre-positioned people, pre-positioned assets like food and water, and also are standing by for search and rescue uh, if that uh, is needed. So we are in adjacent states and waiting for Irma to come through. And as Governor Scott requests our assistance, we're ready to provide it. Can you, can you talk a little bit about communication and how critical it is uh, at a time like this? Uh, the communication is absolutely critical. Our FEMA administrator, Brock Long, and Governor Scott talk each morning and many times throughout the day between the two organizations and also the local organizations. Uh, we have to be in lockstep. We have to be in advance of the hurricane, uh, anticipating the needs. We cannot get behind on a hurricane of this magnitude. And Lane, what kind of advice do you offer to our viewers that are watching right now? What would you be telling them? The number one is that this is going to be a catastrophic hurricane. Even if you are not in the direct path, it is a major hurricane. We do expect it to go uh, again up to a Category 4 hurricane. So heed the warnings of your local officials. Uh, there is a current mandatory uh, mobile home evacuation in uh, Orlando area. But listen uh, to your local officials and be prepared. And can you talk a little bit about how you, you and your team will advance, uh, for example, once the storm passes through Central Florida and then uh, exits to the north? How, how do you get started in providing the relief that you can offer? Well, usually it's life-sustaining, so if necessary, there would be search and rescue, looking for survivors that need assistance to get out of the, uh, the locations they're at. Medical issues become a huge problem if we have damage to hospitals, nursing homes, those type of things. So we do do a priority-based uh, look at search and rescue as requested by the state. Additionally, we look to bring in necessary supplies, food, water, shelter. Um, there are many open shelters in the area. Um, those shelters are listed on the, the Florida website, uh, floridadisasters.org backslash shelters if you need to get to a shelter. Um, and uh, we would ensure that those shelters uh, had the right supplies all, uh, um, to, to, to sustain their populations. Start. What are you going to do tomorrow is really when they're saying the hurricane, hurricane force winds are coming. What are you, where are you going to be at? What are you going to be doing? in my house. Um, I'm going to be with my dad and my dogs, you know, um, hoping for the best. We have a room to go into when it gets really bad, so that's my plan. Hunkering down. Hunkering down, yeah. And, you, down. and you've gotten supplies and things of that nature? Yes, a couple of must Cheez-Its, water, you know, just the basic stuff, sandwiches, and we're kind of ready for anything. We're not really scared. Floridians are kind of just bring it on, so we're ready. And we'll be safe, of course. Safety first. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah. So, and again, speaking of safety, there are shelters all over Sarasota and Manatee counties, but they are filling up. Again, 8 o'clock here is when they're wanting people off the beach. In Manatee County, that is uh, 6 o'clock. So we're talking Holmes Beach, Anna Marie Island, Longboat Key. Let's send it back to you guys. All right, Jake, thank you. Well, first responders put in a very difficult spot right now because... Not only are they protecting us, but they're protecting their family and their own homes. Yeah, they had to board everything up today and then head into work. ABC Action News reporter Nicole Griggs spoke to one of our local heroes. And here in Tampa, you know, you can already feel that slight breeze right now. Truly, people are up against the clock right now. Right now, we have Devin with us. You're still preparing your home last second, trying to finish things up. Uh, wh why right now? Uh, well... I would have been on this yesterday, but I'm a firefighter and I was on duty for the last 24 hours. So I was given the chance to come home today and get our affairs in order. So this is kind of the last chance to get things buttoned up before I have to go back on duty, uh, probably tomorrow morning. You know, truly stressful, I'm sure, for you. You know, most people would have the time to relax right now, but um, instead you have to prepare right now. Uh, just how are you doing having to do this, knowing you have to go back to work tomorrow, and how do you shift that mindset? Yeah, it's um, it's a lot to juggle. I mean, I think my biggest concern is just having to leave my family here while the storm comes through, because I'm going to be at the fire station for that. So, you know, I want to make sure everything's buttoned up tight here and everybody's safe and secure. We're going to have my parents here, as well as my wife and my son. So, you know, just making sure that everything's in order for them before I leave. 
Um, I mean, we have to say on behalf of ABC Action News, just thank you for knowing that you're going to be going out there tomorrow um, protecting people. I know it is a dangerous job. Um, we couldn't do things without you, so thank you. Um, good luck to finishing this up right here. Um, anything else you would tell people just from, the, from your perspective of, of a firefighter? What would you tell people? Well, I think at this point, just, you know, if you haven't made a decision of, of where you're going to go, you're probably best off where you're at, uh, you know, it, as long as that's not a, a mobile home, you're probably good. Um, you know, it, now's not the time to be getting out on the roads and not having an idea of where you're going, you know, so if people don't have a plan in place at this point, it's probably best to make sure that they're secure in their homes and that they're ready to ride it out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Devin. So, um, you know, first responders, they're going to be out here working these double uh, 24, 48 hour shifts, maybe even longer. So we thank you, Devin, for that. Um, we will continue to be out here finding people's stories and bringing them straight to you. Across the ocean here is Fort Lauderdale Beach, which is completely empty at this point. Thank goodness, uh, because we're starting to see some down tree limbs. Nothing big, uh, just just ponds, uh, ponds from palm trees, nothing uh, that you would be too amazed by, but just finally starting to see some of those palm trees give a little bit. Not, none of them are broken, but losing some of their leaves. Uh, this is winch just haven't let up at all. It comes an emergency vehicle, really the only vehicles you're seeing on the road at this point uh, with that curfew in effect, uh, letting people off the island and only back on if you have a driver's license that says you live here. Hopefully, hopefully you've left, but uh, that's the only way you're getting back on the island here. It's just pretty much band after band. And Steve, show them that way. That's going to be the next one straight out there, two or three miles maybe off of Fort Lauderdale Beach. But we're kind of feeling the pattern, and you can recognize them now as, the, as they uh, wash ashore. Looking south, you can see another large band, uh, Dania Beach, Hollywood area. They're going to get soaked if they're not getting soaked already. But it's the winds. The winds just haven't let up and uh, just kind of goes back and forth between that and a good solid rain. It's so interesting. Phil Farrow uh, is, is doing his thing, getting ready to come back on at the top of the hour. But we're watching the radar with you, Brandon, and you're just in this area that's just getting pounded. And Miami's just this little tiny trough of dryness. Incredible. It looks like that the bad stuff is coming your way. And then... You know, those Sheldon and uh, Scheinthal, those guys will get theirs, yes. uh, their rain, you know, next. Because it just, it just spins and we, different bands go across uh, different crews wherever they happen to be uh, located. You kind of get, you kinda get a, a band of heavy wind, a band of that rain. Weather it. If there's lightning in it like there was a, a little while ago, you, you, you hunker down in the safe spots that everyone is uh, kind of located before they got started today. And make sure that uh, you and the, the, the crew that you're with are able to get somewhere if it becomes more than just just wind and rain. But keep an eye out for water spouts, just, just to, the conditions are pr pretty ripe for something like that. That would be something to see. Uh, Looks haven't like, seen yeah, right it, you know, you. Turn around behind uh, you. A water spout, of course, would be a, you know, a funnel cloud over the water. No danger to, to humans or, or any structures, but that would be something. We have not seen anything like that yet. Okay. That's why we're already starting to feel some of those effects. And we've had reports of wind gusts upwards of 70 miles an hour at the Lauderdale Airport in the last hour and a half and down in, into Miami, 75 mile an hour wind gusts. And that's a little bit of a taste of what we're going to see heading into late tonight and tomorrow. Across our area, some storm reports of 40, 45 miles an hour. I'll show you in a second. So there's the radar as it comes off the north coast of Cuba. It is exactly the uh, same longitude now as our area south florida right at 80 west and it will continue to move west northwest and eventually make it up very close to key west if it doesn't make a landfall there it will be within 10 or 15 miles likely to the east of that and then it's up in toward naples and fort myers big rains on the radar feeder bands these are the outer feeder bands coming in across fort pierce eventually into Vero, down through Stewart. And this is where we get those winds. I talked about this the last couple of nights. Uh, it uh, is calm, there's not much going on, and then a band comes through, and just like that, you've got 30, 40, 50 mile an hour winds and torrential rains that last 20 to 30 minutes, and then it tapers off. In fact, look at this, there's one right here, and then there's about a 30 minute break, 
and then here's a second one, and then you have uh, probably about an hour break, and there's a third one there, and that's actually the uh, little bit stronger. That's the one that produced a couple of tornado warnings in, uh, down around Broward, and it also uh, popped up that 70 mile an hour wind gust at the Lauderdale Airport about 4.30 this afternoon. Here's the forecast track. So as I said, very close to Key West. There's two in the morning, not too far from now actually, and then a landfall somewhere in the lower keys and then advancing in toward Naples, which is right there. That is tomorrow afternoon, 140 mile an hour winds. This is when they start to feel some of the storm surge and then almost paralleling the coast, but unfortunately just off the coast. So it keeps that battery, that warm water of the Gulf of Mexico, and it's able to likely keep its strength. Still four as it works in toward Tampa and Sarasota. It's down to a three at that point, and then quickly up eventually up into Kentucky and Tennessee. It's a rainmaker as it uh, moves through that area. And the computer model tracks uh, still, they're actually in better agreement tonight than they were even last night at the same time. The GFS is one of the farther east models, but most are pretty much right under the official forecast from the Hurricane Center. You don't get much better confidence than that, especially with a storm that's now starting to make a, uh, a turn toward the Northwest. As far as our storm reports, no reports of any kind of tornadoes. We do have a tornado watch for Palm Beach County and south to Miami. We've had reports of almost 40 miles an hour at Stewart uh, this afternoon, early evening at 44. That is Hope Sound with a weather sensor there. Tornado watch in effect for Palm Beach County, the yellow area south to Miami, back around the lake. And uh, you, you have to believe that as we get into the evening, we're going to see that tornado watch uh, updated all the way up and through the Treasure Coast. And the flood advisory is also, our flood watch is also in effect where we can see about 10, five to 10 inches of rain before it's all said and done uh, with higher amounts possible around the lake. The forecast models, and this is the European model, bringing in some pretty significant winds, but they, most of those big winds don't arrive until tomorrow. Here's a, a look at tomorrow evening, mid evening. Those are hurricane force wind gusts along the coastline and even stronger winds, Bill Glade and Okeechobee. And this is just one forecast model. This isn't the official forecast, but it's easy to do in this case because the Hurricane Center is you know, matching up the track and the intensity from the European model. So I'd say this is pretty reliable to use as uh, we uh, forecast what we can expect the next uh, couple of days. And then as the storm starts to pull to the north of Tampa, the winds come out of the southwest then. There's Monday at noon. And uh, we start to drop off with just those tropical storm force winds continuing. So there's another look at it there. So the uh, big, the strongest winds stay around Key West. We'll have to watch Key West around midnight through about two in the morning because we could see some significant wind reports come out of there. And then tomorrow, look at 144 mile an hour. That's what this model there. Fort Myers is right on the eastern eye wall of the European model. Storm surge will be highest on the southwest coast of Florida. We've seen a little bit around here today, about a foot from what I've been seeing uh, in some of the inlets, and it shouldn't get much higher, but we will keep an eye on that. But on the west coast, in behind, once the storm center gets to the north, all of that water rushes back to the coastline and becomes a, a pretty significant situation. So we extend to the rest of Flagler County starting tomorrow night. For now, reporting live on Flagler Beach, Malapoli, West 2 News. All right, man, Daytona Beach is also still recovering from Hurricane Matthew. Today, we've seen people come to the beach to take photos of the water as those waves get stronger. West 2's Rob Below is live along the Daytona Beach of Boardwalk. Robert, how's it there? Well, Meredith, there are very strong winds. We're having gusts up to 40 miles per hour. You can see on the beach there are still people out here taking pictures. They say, although there's a mandatory evacuation for Beachside in Volusia County, they tell me they do plan to evacuate, but they want to get some pictures in just in case the very worst happens as Irma inches closer. Along the beachfront, you can see here the Pizza King, Michael's on the Beach, very popular businesses all boarded up preparing for Hurricane Irma. Down the road on Main Street, we spoke with the store owner there at Bergie's Tiki Bar, who is brand new to the area, just bought the bar a few months ago. He tells us he's very nervous as Hurricane Irma approaches. Absolutely worried. I think everybody's worried. Uh, something that's going to cover the whole state of Florida, going to impact a lot of lives, going to impact a lot of people, and uh, nobody likes to see that. Our main thing is going to be our kitchen. Uh, 
coolers, refrigerators, uh, back-end generators as much as possible. As for those heading out of town on the beach side, time is running out as the bridge is expected to close at noon on Sunday. That's because that's when they expect uh, winds to be sustained at 39 miles per hour. At that time, they are going to be forced to close the bridge. Officials tonight are urging residents in this area by tonight, make sure you have your plan in place. We will be here throughout the evening to keep you updated in Volusia County. We're live in Daytona Beach. Robert Lowe, West 2 News. Plenty of people are making the wise decision to ride out the storm in a shelter. Hundreds of them have been set up across the state. That includes people in Lake County. What's your scale? Pascal Brown joins us live from the Round Lake Elementary School. Again, it's all computer models right now. We can't be sure what Irma will do next. We have a long way to go on this. Again, it looks pretty good for our side of the state right now. But uh, the farther south you go, the worse it gets. We saw Farron Lee on Miami Beach a short time ago. Uh, the winds and the rains had picked up considerably. I want to uh, actually, on the phone now, we have the North Miami Beach Mayor, Richard Rand, uh, phoned us to talk about evacuations. Mr. Mayor, are you there? Yes, it's actually Major Richard Rand. I'm major. major over the. Uh... Well, it's emergency a, operations. You know, there. sir, if you'd like to run for office, I'm sure some folks in the control room will help <laughs> you, you do so. Me. Listen, listen, I know we want to talk about evacuations now. We may all be under the impression that everybody is out who needs to be out. What's the status? Because I know at this point, if somebody gets trapped by a storm surge, your people would put their lives at risk to go get them. Yeah, so let me tell you, I mean, I just heard the update up there, and I know you guys haven't been feeling it as of yet, and if you have, it's going to only get worse. We're experiencing some pretty heavy winds down here in the north end of Dade County. We have some power lines down, some transformers that have blown up. Uh, we have some minor reports of, of possible burglary. So things are starting to stir up in the north end of Dade County. Uh, I can tell you that we jumped on this pretty quickly. And uh, once the wind sustained 40 miles an hour, emergency response is delayed. So people that have not heeded the warning to evacuate are pretty much on their own until we can get to them. So people really need to definitely not kick their feet up, uh, be very conscientious of what's going on around them, and it's only going to get worse as the, uh, the minutes tick away. Major Rand, let me ask you this. I'm from Miami. I grew up in the Kendall area. My folks um, survived Hurricane Andrew. And it seems, though, I mean, in listening to so many of the people we've spoken to down in the Miami area, that many people have taken the warning. There have been a lot of evacuations out of the Keys and Miami Day, but those who are staying are taking this storm very seriously. They're not. And, you know, it's unfortunate that people feel that, you know, hurricane parties and staying home and partying these out, you know, can be fun, but it can also be very deadly. And like I said, you know, power line goes down and somebody doesn't know it and they walk outside and step in a puddle of water and they get electrocuted and, and die. I mean, this is a very serious situation for us. And, well, um, Major, what, you know, are you getting from, uh, what are you getting from your uh, folks on the street as far as interacting with people in North Miami Beach? The, the tone of what those people say, I know that there are those who say they'll ride anything out, and they, they bring up Andrew, as a matter of fact, but everybody has to remember how small the eye was of Andrew, what the path was. It wasn't a, a wide swath. I mean, this thing is a monster, depending on where it comes in towards Miami, but what are your, your folks on the street hearing from people who've chosen to stay in the area? Well, I can tell you that we have very few people in the north end of Dade County that we know of that have stayed. Our shelters are full to capacity. We've actually had to locate people up to Broward and Palm Beach counties. Um, so, so far, knock on wood, we haven't had any major, you know, catastrophes, but it's early yet. You know, it's early yet, and it's heading north, and the people north of us need to prepare for this storm. This storm, just because it's, it's not a full-force hurricane right now, it's extremely dangerous. Right. No, exactly. Major Richard Rand, thank you so much from the North Miami Beach Police Department. We appreciate you, sir, taking the time to talk with us. And as we've been telling you for the last 24 hours, conditions have been deteriorating down in Miami-Dade County. And what they were seeing yesterday is now making its way up to our area. So over the next several hours, we're going to begin to see our conditions deteriorating as well. Those right there. Surge is something that a lot of us have had to deal with, maybe with tropical storms. I mean, Pasco County, I think we all know, coastal Pasco County floods all the time. That water comes in, even with a tropical storm and at high tide, and you can have water up to your waist around US-19. I remember that happened back in 96 with Josephine. 
mean, I was covering a tropical storm that it literally was up to my waist on US 19. This is going to be bigger. And unfortunately, it is going to come in at high tide. We're looking at a five to eight feet expected surge. Probably, again, highest at high tide. That would be Monday morning, late Sunday night, Monday morning for areas. Now, down south, it's going to be higher. The wave heights, obviously, this is areas looks like about 20 to 30 feet in wave heights. I buy that. So not only do you have the surge, but you have the waves on top of it. So down in Naples, down in Bonita Beach, Bonita Springs, Fort Myers area, where the center may cross, you could feasibly have 50 feet of water in a sense, not surge that high, but you have 30, you have a, sur a surge of 15 feet and then 35 foot waves on top of that. So that's why inundation, the water is so heavy. There's nowhere you can go. You can run from the wind. You cannot run from the water, which is why when we talk about these storm surges, we really, really try to let folks remember because a lot of folks in this area have never had to deal with storm surge, kind of confused as to what it is. So again, at this point in time, this is something we're going to continue to watch very closely and evacuations will continue. And we've got our Carson Chambers right now. She's live in North Pinellas, where we're now hearing one of the local hospitals is beginning to evacuate patients. Carson? Well, hey, Dennis, and that is starting to happen just behind us. We can't show those people because we don't want to uh, compromise their identities. However, we are joined by the CEO of Florida Hospital, North Pinellas, um, Trisha Williams. Tell me how you're going to get people out and how many people and where they're going. Well, we have 69 patients that are uh, being transferred right now, 48 to Florida Hospital Wesley Chapel and 21 to Florida Hospital Zephyr Hills. And how will you get them there? We uh, have 10 ambulances uh, that are taking patients as we speak, and we have an additional 20 that we've requested. Okay, and then at that point, your staff, your employees, are they going too? We're worried about them too. Of course, as we are as well. So staff is going with them. So staff and families and their pets that we're going to hunker down here are going with them. And anybody else that was planning to be here, we're actually finding places and shelter for them to go with their families and pets as well. Several hours, I would guess. Yes, this will take several hours tonight. Okay, but you guys have a chief medical officer who is here, and tell me about him. Yes, he did. So the chief medical officer, Dr. Torres from Florida Hospital Tampa, came here to help us evacuate. He actually evacuated six hospitals in Hurricane Sandy. So we have his expertise to, to help us through this difficult time. Thank you for your time. I know you have to run, Thank so we're going to let you go. Thank, Thank you, so you Tricia. As we head through the day tomorrow, as the storm makes landfall first in Key West and then perhaps on Florida's west coast throughout the day, this is the impact that we're expecting in the Palm Beaches and the Treasure Coast. So let's begin with coastal Palm Beach County. And again, the definition that I'm using for coastal Palm Beach County would be from the Turnpike East. So sustained winds throughout the day tomorrow. 55 to 60 miles per hour. That's tropical storm force with winds with wind gusts up to 75. In other words, up to hurricane force wind gusts across South Florida tomorrow. Not that dissimilar from what we dealt with last year with Matthew. If you remember Matthew, I'm sure you haven't forgotten Matthew. But the, when the highest wind gust we saw was in Indian River County. It was 72 miles per hour if memory serves. So that's the kind of scenario we're expecting. Now, storm surge, two to four feet. The next high tide, that plays a key role in all of this. And the next high tide here along the coast in Palm Beach County is tomorrow afternoon, about mid-afternoon. So that water level will be rising just naturally. Then you throw in the approaching hurricane and we'll go up two to four feet. Rainfall, that will continue to be an issue for all of Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast, some localized amounts up to a foot. Now in inland Palm Beach County, a little better chance of rain. You'll be closer to the core of the storm and the rainfall could be heavier as well. So sustained winds there, 45 to 65 and wind gusts topping hurricane force up to about 80 miles per hour. Let's go up I-95 the Turnpike, say hello to Martin County, where winds there would be between 45 and 55 sustained, wind gusts to 75, storm surge between three and five feet. And again, the rainfall fairly uniform, I think, for the Treasure Coast and most of coastal Palm Beach County. St. Lucie County, your wind gusts would approach hurricane force and your rainfall could approach in some spots up to one foot. Indian River County, Again, the same scenario here. Gusty winds between 45 and 55 sustained with those wind gusts up to 75. Storm surge 
a little bit higher here. You're more susceptible to storm surge in Indian River County. As you know, if you do any boating, you go offshore here, you have to go quite a ways to find some deep water. It's different in Palm Beach County where the Continental Shelf is fairly close to Palm Beach County. And finally, our friends in Okeechobee County, as you can see, between 55 and 60, and those wind gusts up to about 75. Now, we've been talking about storm surge, and there's a big concern for storm surge values on the west side of Lake Okeechobee. Now, as you know, the lake isn't very deep, and the level right now, 13.7 feet, so the wind from a hurricane can really push this water around. So as the hurricane is moving from south to north, we're going to see a southerly wind, and initially the water will be pushed to the northern part of Lake Okeechobee, so that's why in this part of the lake we could see storm surge values of 15, 16, or 17 feet. Then, when the storm is farther north, the winds will come more out of an easterly direction initially. In fact, that'll start initially, and then I'll wait, back up. As the storm is moving north, we'll get that initial wind blowing in this direction, and that will drive all this water in that way. So on the west side of Lake Okeechobee, over by Moorhaven, could reach 15 to 20 feet, and that's why there have been evacuations ordered across the lake, around the lake, because of the concern, not necessarily that the dike would fail, but that we would see water going over the dike, and at 20 feet, that, again, would be a real threat. So, clear for the officers. You know, we've done a lot of live shots throughout storms. Look at this over here. How many officers that you had come respond after you saw me? What's the importance of telling people not to come out here? If the media can get one message out to the people, uh, that would do us a tremendous favor to stay off of the beach. This is not a time to be coming out here and be curiosity seeking or to be going into the I'll keep walking down the beach with me, Chief. Uh, because the threat and the surges of it, it's especially during the squalls, it gets to a magnitude that you really, uh, it's, it's very, very perilous. So, like, like you've had two or three squalls. We were here during one of them pretty bad. Yes, they're coming in more frequently now. Around 2.30, we had a pretty moderate one, and they were coming in about one an hour. Now it seems to be about every 20 minutes, and they're getting more and more ferocious with each one that are coming through. Tell me about the concern of storm surge here. You can look at the ocean there. Right now, we're doing okay with it, but uh, we have noticed that it's picked up rapidly and more intense in the last two squalls that have come through. So if the worst part for us is still to come, as the media and the meteorologists have told us, then we probably could have a much greater storm surge onto the beach. Okay, thank you very much, Chief. So a clear message that, okay, thank you. A clear message that he's sending out is that, you know, we've done a lot of these stories in past years. People would be coming out to the beach. No big deal. This police chief, he brought all of his officers out here and said, look, things are going to get worse. And I have to tell you, when we were standing out here during that squall, I could not believe it that people were actually coming outside in it. But instead of just saying, I can't believe it, here you have, you know, action. They, they actually came here. Let's walk down, before I toss it back to you guys, let's walk down this way a little bit on the beach. We actually have action so that the police are, you know, they're serious. If you're going to come out to the beach here, even uh, in these uh, lulls, that you're going you're gonna to have issues. Plus, keep this in mind, there are curfews going into effect in South Florida. And the other message they... They really want me to express to you, the public, look, they are well aware that people are sitting at home saying that this storm has shifted. So it gives them this sense of freedom, if you will, to get out of their homes. Totally understandable. What they are saying, though, is that those squalls are coming. While they may not be those hurricane force winds consistently, they are dangerous to be in. So in this case here in Sunny Isles Beach, where you saw that video, where you see these waves right here, their message is really clear, a message that we are passing along to you, the public. Just don't come out to the beach. Back to you. Good advice, Raj, definitely, without a doubt. You know, people see that lull, and they go out there, and then the next thing you know, you're getting pounded by rain and wind. Florida Keys with dangerous winds and continues to remain a catastrophic and life-threatening major Category 3 storm with winds of 125 miles per hour. The center is getting better organized and will intensify as it approaches Florida. The core will move across the Keys early tomorrow morning and go across our state on Sunday. It will impact Northwest Florida on Monday. The Keys will see direct impact of the eye of the storm. There will be 18 to 15 inches of rain across the state and up to 25 inches in the Keys. 
Tornadoes are possible in South Florida this evening and Central Florida tomorrow. Hurricane conditions will be felt across the West Coast beginning Sunday morning. The tropical storm conditions will be felt across the, the warning area. Millions of Floridians will begin seeing impacts with life-threatening winds tonight. Tonight. This is a serious threat of significant, there is a serious threat of significant storm surge along the entire west coast of Florida, and this has increased to 15 feet of impact above ground level in southwest Florida. Tampa will see a surge of five to eight feet. The Big Bend area will see a surge of three to six feet. We will also see an increase in flooding of rivers throughout the peninsula. This is clearly a life-threatening situation. Remember, in southwest Florida, the storm surge comes after the strongest winds. Do not think the storm is over when the wind slows down. Local officials will let you know when it is safe. The storm surge will rush in and it could kill you. It, it's gonna, it, the, when it happens, the storm, the water just rushes in and rushes out. With the storm's latest track, families in the Panhandle need to be on high alert for severe weather, including tropical storm and hurricane force winds. Here in Tallahassee, it's likely we will experience hurricane force winds, and families must start preparing now. We saw what Hurricane Irvine did to this community last year, and we could see similar or more severe wind threats from Irma. If you have been ordered to evacuate, you need to leave now. This is your last chance to make a good decision. Evacuations are in place in areas across the state. More than 6.5 million Floridians have been ordered to evacuate. Do not put yourself or your family's life at risk. Now is the time to do the right thing for your family. School buses are needing the evacuations. Please take advantage of this service. If you need to leave and are unable to do so for any reason, call 1-800-342-3557 and we will do everything we can to get you out. Protecting life. All right, we're going to interrupt the governor for just one minute because, as you can see, the red box indicates a tornado warning has now been issued for parts of Palm Beach County. The tornado warning, in effect, for Broward County and... Uh, in our part of Florida and uh, southwestern Palm Beach County. This tornado warning is now in effect until 7 p.m. Uh, Doppler radar indicating a tornado near Coral Springs moving west at 35 miles per hour. Uh, flying debris will be dangerous with this storm. And what we're going to do, Chris is going to join me here in a second. I'm going to uh, analyze this storm system itself. Again, this tornado warning issued just a moment ago by the National Weather Service office in Miami. And Chris, are you there with me? We can pop Chris up. He's on the other WSI. Uh, this is what we expected. Quick moving tornadoes developing across the area. The tornado in this area moving quickly off toward the northwest. Thankfully, this is a sparsely populated region of Palm Beach County. Not a Coral Springs, however, obviously there's some a lot of people in that part of the area, but in this part of Palm Beach County, it is just west of Boca. So our potential tornado is right here. And again, moving at a rapid rate to the northwest at about 40, maybe 45 miles per hour. Chris, are you there as well? Yes, Mike, I am right, here. I'm Chris, guys, too. Yeah, here we go. We are tracking this. We can do this side by side as we kind of do both uh, comparison. You can have a uh, mic in a box as we're kind of got or both the WSIs. I'm seeing a lot of rotation again. We told you that this rotation was coming out of Broward County and would affect a portion of southern and southwestern Palm Beach County. You can see through Terry town right now if you're around the area right along us 27 into uh, palm beach county that's where the area rotation could produce a quick funnel cloud or a tornado the good news is this is a very small populated area especially just towards the west of 27 but this is what that watch has indicated moving forward through as you heard mike talk about a little after seven and what i'm also seeing offshore is this right off the coast of fort lauderdale this little spin up that would be moving on shore i'll keep a close eye on that but for the immediate area for Palm Beach County, especially southern Palm Beach County, back towards southwestern Palm Beach County, that's where that tornado warning has been issued. Again, this is not a very highly populated area, but just want to let you know this is the trend. We're going to see these brief spin-ups, and we've been hitting home the fact that a tornado threat was going to be increasing 
over the next few hours. So don't be surprised to see some quick funnel clouds coming on shore, especially it might just show you the radar just towards the east of uh, Boynton Beach and towards Delray Beach. And Mike, I'm keeping a close eye on that cell just uh, east of Fort Lauderdale because all of this is moving in from the ocean and drifting towards the northwest. But again, we'll be watching rotation across southern Palm Beach County, moving generally towards the north and west at about 20 to 25. So that's what we know, Mike, right now. All right, Chris, thank you. And uh, I did a little wider swath on uh, the arrival time of the storm, and it's picked up a few more locations, including perhaps the BB and T Center uh, airboat. Not quite sure what that is. And then, of course, Terrytown. So this is the cell, and you can see it right here now showing up on our Doppler radar, indicating the, this, and we're using the Doppler winds at the moment as we look inside the storm. Again, rapidly moving off to the northwest at around 40 to 45 miles per hour. A reminder, Palm Beach County, Miami-Dade, Broward, in fact, all of South Florida to the Keys remains under a tornado watch. And as you heard the governor say before we interrupted him, there is that threat of tornadoes tonight here in South Florida and then overnight across parts of the Treasure Coast and eventually into Central Florida as well. So again, this is a tornado warning issued by the National Weather Service office in Miami. Again, a Thankfully, it's fairly sparsely populated area. The one town in the community that is uh, where in where that tornado may be moving is uh, Terrytown. And again, this tornado warning in effect until 7. Chris, let's go back to you. Yeah, just Mike showing you, we've been talking about this rotation happening, and it continues to move towards the north and west. I also want to show you another area that I'm watching down towards the south. This is right off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. What we're looking for is this quick spinning direction. We see the greens and the reds come closely together, indicating that rotation right there. And that's sitting right off coast with some gusty winds and a supercell right now uh, poising in towards Fort Lauderdale. And I know this is generally not in our viewing area, but we've got a lot of family and friends that have come up from Broward County and towards the Palm Beaches and the Treasure Coast. So the future track with this rotating thunderstorm, Sunrise Key 656, Fort Lauderdale 704, Oakland Park 710, Rock Island 715 and Lauder Hill. Again, to just to reiterate, this is a very developing situation. These things develop very quickly. They're moving towards the northwest. So if you have friends or family or know anybody from Fort Lauderdale to Oakland Park, just east of I-95, this is a rotating thunderstorm and we'll continue to track it towards the northwest, Mike. So that's going to be the trend moving forward. I'm going to be looking at these supercells developing over the uh, Gulf Stream and then won't be surprised to see more tornado warnings pop up to see even, Mike. All right. And as we discussed earlier, Chris, this is the opportunity to review those safe room plans that we've been talking about, because this is the type of situation I think we're going to see frequently during the evening hours, quick moving storms popping up, producing tornadoes. And let me focus on these heavy rain cells now moving on shore here in parts of Palm Beach County. And you can see it's really moving quickly at around 40 to 45 miles per hour as we continue to watch that tornado warning primarily for southwestern Palm Beach County. But let's track some of these storms as they continue moving off to the west. If I can go all the way over there, just to give you an idea of how quickly these storms will move. Now, right now, the, the time is 629. Some of these storms will be on top of you in just moments, for example, across this part of Palm Beach County. That's why it's so important to have that safe room set up now because as these quick-moving storms move our way, these rapidly moving storms, I should say, move our way. They could quickly develop a tornado, so you need to be able to run to that safe room and stay in there. Again, it's not going to be very long. This tornado warning is only in effect until 7 o'clock so, because the storms are moving so fast. But this is our primary concern at the moment as we head through the evening hours. Let me just zoom in here just a bit, get out of that. And we'll zoom in and focus more on that one cell that is now approaching the southeastern corner of Palm Beach County. My radar, of course, doesn't want to work at the moment. Let's go back to Chris as I try to fix this radar. Chris? Yeah, Mike, let's talk about this rotation. Again, keeping a very close eye on this situation. Yes, it's not a highly populated area crossing from Broward County and towards Palm Beach County. We've just got Terrytown right along US 27. But I just want to paint the picture. More rotating thunderstorms will be coming on shore because 
because of the situation with Irma. We told you, you know, for since we got in, this is going to be a highly tornado threat, a high tornado threat through the next few hours. And lo and behold, here we go, rotation just towards the uh, west of the sawgrass. So if you have friends and family down towards that portion of uh, Broward County, just west of Parkland, Coral Springs, Tamarack, this is just west of the sawgrass, pushing in towards uh, northwest, towards uh, southern and southwestern. Uh, Palm Beach County. We've got a really close eye on a situation that's happening, especially right off the coast in towards uh, just east of Fort Lauderdale. Look at this spinner. See right here. We've got a lot of rotation here right off the Gulf Stream. This one moving towards the north and northwest as well. So heads up Fort Lauderdale. There's no warning for this one just yet. Won't be surprised for the National Weather Service down in Miami to issue a warning for this one. So Fort Lauderdale, Oakland Park, maybe just south of Pompano, we'll be looking at another rotating thunderstorm. All right, and Chris, uh, they just issued a new tornado warning for the cell you were just talking about. Okay, if so you come back to me, you can see it right here. This is in Broward County, a brand new tornado warning. That's what does include Pompano Beach, Fort Lauderdale. Lauderdale, Sunrise, Tamarack, and Coral Springs. So this is the second tornado warning issued by the National Weather Service office in Miami just uh, in the last few minutes. There's the initial warning. That's the one that is uh, including a small part of western and southwestern Palm Beach County, thankfully a, a not a very populated area of Palm Beach County, but safe to say this is a densely populated area of Broward County, and this is a brand new tornado warning that was just issued a moment ago. Let me see if I can get the information on it from the National Weather Service. This one is in effect now until 7 as well. And uh, Doppler radar indicating a tornado over Fort Lauderdale. This one's moving at about 35 miles per hour. And again, that's the key. I mean, these things are moving. And look at the people affected here. The one to the northwest, hardly anyone being affected. So this is the real deal for parts of Broward County now. More, almost, almost 1 million people, including some uh, rather large uh, c communities here, Coconut Creek, Coral Springs, and uh, Fort Lauderdale as well, Tamarack, Pompano Beach. And this is just to our south. So the increasing concern, and we've been talking about this, Chris, for the past hour or so, um, the Storm Prediction Center updated their tornado watch saying that there's an increasing risk of tornadoes and now they're really starting to pop right mike yeah, this is why we're on the air we were we were telling you about this right here and then lo and behold they went ahead and issued a tornado warning spotted this about five minutes ago and said heads up to the people in fort lauderdale now you're under that warning again and you can see the cities around the area sunrise key 657 uh, fort lauderdale 705 so that's in the next uh 20 minutes, Oakland Park, 711, North Andrews Gardens, that's Oakland Park area as well, 715, and St. George, 723. This rotating thunderstorm, I tell you what, it is bulking it. It's moving towards the northwest very quickly at 30 miles per hour. So if you have friends, family, anyone down there, it's just across the county line in northern Broward County and towards central Broward, Broward County. But this is the trend. We're going to see more rotating thunderstorms as Irma continues to get closer across the area. So there's that warning. You can see it including the Lauder Hill, Fort Lauderdale, back out towards Plantation, Sunrise up towards Tamarack, uh, Coral Springs, a portion of Parkland as well. And then another rotating thunderstorm that continues to move closer towards uh, the uh, Terrytown area as well. And you can see, I want to show you, as these rain bands continue to rotate as they come on shore, they're hitting a little bit of friction as they're coming on shore as well. So we're going to continue to see, at least with this rain band, the high tornado threat for the next, let's say, hour. Then we'll get a break. And then when the next rain band comes on shore, Mike, we'll be tracking another tornado threat again. So now through the next, let's say, 12 hours, we've got a really high tornado threat of these quick, spinning, developing situations. I tell you what, it was just five minutes ago that thing developed over the Gulf Stream. We were talking about it, keeping a close eye on it, and lo and behold, a tornado warning was issued for that area, Mike. And uh, increasing concern about these cells now moving onshore across southeastern Palm Beach County, focusing on Boca, Del Rey, Boynton Beach. <laughs> Also, Lake Worth, and uh, we're going to focus on that. And, Greg, you're telling me we have something now? Oh, there we go. Look at that. All right, shot. you can actually see what appears to be a tornado. This is Lauderdale by the sea, and you can actually see the funnel. And, again, this is live video, or is this uh, taped just a short time ago? Might have been taped just a short time ago, but you can see Ari running. He's been standing there doing reports from the beach. And as the camera comes around, you did see 
a funnel clap. Chris, did you see that? That was pretty impressive. And that saw, I saw it, Mikey. It was a, uh, a spinner. It was a, a little spiral coming on shore right there. And that is actually confirmation about what is that. Uh, let me just, uh, I'm coming back on camera just to show you what we're uh, tracking again. Let me take this storm track off. But here is that rotation. Look at this. So uh, look at that. Ari is in Lauderdale by the sea, right? So he's right here. And just just towards the uh, south of him, if he was looking towards the south, that's where the spin was. And lo and behold, here it is spinning right there. You saw it live on that. If you had a glimpse, you could see it in the background. Uh, and that's coming on shore, that spinner. So that it didn't look too big. That was the good news. But at least that rotation, it's coming in towards Wilton Manors, Fort Lauderdale, back through uh, downtown Fort Lauderdale. So again, this water spout, what it looked like to be developing moved on shore and right now as we see it we're still watching some rotation right here off across the uh, gulf stream uh, just east of fort lauderdale we'll see if this one spins up mike again because it looks like the one that uh, was in ari shot here we go again it's kind of in that same area but i'm seeing the rotation broaden out just a little bit so we'll continue to monitor this situation but it was just fascinating to see in real time what we're actually talking about you saw a little spin right there in ari's live shot out towards uh, fort lauderdale and lauderdale by the sea so i'm going to monitor this again mike as we continue to track multiple areas of rotation coming on shore and i'm looking at the showers uh just north of uh north of fort lauderdale the ones coming on to boynton beach and down raise the one in your shot mm -hmm. let me analyze those a little bit more and see if i see some rotation in those as well all right and before you go i want you just to take a moment and explain let's go back to chris and explain those red blocks those green blocks because we're looking at that and folks at home would be saying well wait a minute that's a tornado explain what we're right it looks like uh, christmas colors right well, let me explain this to you reds greens they indicate winds going in towards the radar and coming out towards the radar and when you have the greens and the reds coming so closely together and popping that's showing the rotation what we call a couplet and that's what you're seeing right here it's not your average radar like mike is showing you but what what, what we're tracking is upper level winds winds in the storm when we see rotation that in turns turns into a, a funnel cloud or a tornado so that's what we're tracking reds meeting the greens coming very close together so rotation that continues to through highly populated areas mike the broward county north of downtown fort lauderdale right now in towards the wilton manners area and no one has traveled the state as much as you've traveled these last five or six days so i want to ask what you've seen and experienced out there that's, that's, that's caused you special concern well, the thing that really causes me the biggest concern is I don't think anybody has realized the extent of this uh, storm surge. I mean, if you stop and think about it, my hometown, Naples, I mean, 15 feet above ground level. I mean, how do you survive that? I mean, and, and you know, last, um, I don't know if I remember this story last year, but this lady um, just south of here, um, I think there was about six foot of storm surge. Um, and she stayed, of course, because of her pets, which you can imagine you want to. And it got to three feet and she realized, I mean, it was an older house. She probably has seven foot ceilings and she realized she was not going to survive. She was so lucky because she got out of her house.